this video, we're discussing the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for the binomial random variable. That's the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. Let's look at this problem to help us work out these three quantities for this scenario. So the scenario is that we want to find the average and standard deviation for the number of fives when rolling a fair die 20 times. So we're going to roll a die 20 times. We're going to count the number of fives on it. And we want to know what's the average number of fives and what's the standard deviation number of fives that we would expect when we do an experiment like this over and over and over again. Okay, so let's talk about the mean. The mean is actually a very simple formula. The mean is going to be just n times p, where n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. Now in this problem, a success is getting a 5 because this problem is about rolling 5s. So let's figure out these two quantities then very simply for this problem. n is the number of trials total. That's going to be 20. And p is going to be 1 sixth. The reason why I say it's 1 sixth is because if we're looking for the probability that we roll a 5, then we'll have 1 5 on the die over 6 possible numbers on the die. And so the end result here is, of course, 20 over 6. All right, and then if you want to reduce that, basically we could say that uh, we divide it and get a decimal, or we can uh, just reduce the fraction and then divide afterwards. So if I put 2 into both of these, I get 10 on top and 3 on the bottom. And you know that 3 will go in there evenly 3 times, leaving you 1 third or 3.3 repeating as our mean. So our mean is 3.3 repeating, 3 and 1 third. Okay, so that's our answer for the mean. Now, how about the variance? How do we do that one? That's actually pretty easy. The variance is like the mean. It's a simple formula like that. And when you go to work out a problem that involves the variance, what you want to do is just remember that the formula is just n times p, which was basically the mean, times 1 minus p, or in other words, q. So this is n times p times q. Q is the same as 1 minus p. This is your probability of a failure, because 1 minus p is all the leftover chances or leftover probability for 100%, right? So if your probability of success, for example, is 20%, your Q probability would have to be 80%, because the two of these must add up to 100. If this one is 1 sixth, this must be the other 5 sixths of the scenarios, right? OK, so let's fill it out then. So we already saw what n times p was. But let's just fill it in again. It's 20 times 1 sixth times the Q. And again, if there's one way to succeed out of six possibilities, there are five ways to fail out of six possibilities, right? And so that gives you the Q, the probability of failure. And then again, you would just work it all out, right? So um, let's just figure it out by using uh, my calculator here. So I'll have 20 times uh, 1 divided by 6 times 5 divided by 6. And when we're done with that, we get the answer 2.7 repeating. 2.7 repeating. All right, very good. So that's our variance for the problem. Now, we weren't, asked, we weren't asked to calculate the variance, but the variance leads to the standard deviation because the variance and the standard deviation we know are related simply by the square root. So all I have to do to finish this problem is to take the square root of this quantity, and that will give me, ultimately, my standard deviation. So let's get the variance by taking the square root of n times p times q. So the variance is the square root of n times p times q which we already got the answer for, but if we want to work it out, it'll be the square root of 20 times 1 sixth times 5 sixth. And then, of course, when you take the square root or do the multiplication, we already saw that that's 2.7 repeating, right? 2.7777. And if we take the square root of that, raising it to the half power or taking the square root, it's the same thing we get the answer 1.6 repeating. So that is our standard deviation, 1.6 repeating. OK, so that's it. That's all you have to do when, wanting, when you want to calculate the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation for a binomial random variable. So it's really a lot easier than the other formulas we've had so far in the course for the mean and for the standard deviation. In the previous problems, that was sometimes a pretty labor-intensive calculation. But for the binomial random variable, it's really nice and simple. Just multiply two or three quantities together, and sometimes you have to take the square root. So in this case, just n times p, in this case, uh, n times p times q, and in this case, the square root of n times p times q. And that's it.